If you're a game developer like me, then you probably have a backlog of a lot of unfinished or abandoned projects, and today we're going to be looking at a few of mine. I'm a person that's always coming up with new ideas, and sometimes I think these ideas are so good that I want to make an actual game out of them. But a lot of times, especially early on, I quickly realize that there's a lot of work that goes into making a game, and I either just forget about the project, leave the project, or abandon the project. So today we're going to look at a few of my older projects, and I'm going to tell you what I liked about the project, what I didn't like about the project, and why I stopped working on it. With that being said, let's get on to the first one. If you've been a viewer of my channel for a long time, you'll probably know what this one is. It's called Ink Bee, and it's a game about coloring the world and solving puzzles. I had so many issues with this game, and as you can see, me going into the first level, it was really, really broken, and I was trying so many new and different things to it, and a lot of it wasn't working. I can't remember exactly what I was trying to do, but I just couldn't get things right. The second level here was the level where I was testing out multiplayer i wanted there to be local co-op and in the single player levels you would have this crate that you could pick up but in the multiplayer levels you would have to jump on each other's heads you can see i could pick up the crate put it down and then go up and collect the coin and the coin was basically like a, a hidden item that if you collected all of them you would get different colors for your character but obviously i never got that far into it one of the cool things about this is the more you color the map, the higher your rating is at the end. So you can see I colored a bunch of stuff and I got an A plus for this level. Once you complete a level, you're sent back to the HUD and it opens up a little door that leads you into the next level. Here we have the third level and this introduced new things like a button and a little platform that only moves if something is on the button. And right here, you're supposed to put the crate down and jump up and collect the coin, but I must have changed the jump height or something because I actually cannot reach this coin no matter how hard I tried. So, of course, the puzzle is you put the crate onto the button and it moves the platform and then you get across and then you can finish the level. That was sort of a tutorial to teach you how those things kind of worked. In the next level, I had this really cool puzzle where you could jump down here, put down this crate, and then jump up. And then you quickly realize that, oh, I can't get over anymore. And it was just kind of a cool puzzle. And when I went to restart the game, this happened and I have no idea how or why this is happening but clearly my bug testing was pretty poopy at the time but that is as far as i got with ink Bee. i actually stopped working on ink Bee because i was experiencing a bunch of issues in construct with how it was doing the actual coloring feature and i couldn't get it to work properly and i was really beginner and new and i didn't know how to fix it and i just i just quit and i i gave up and i started working on this game because i was working on jelly farmer and then stopped working on jelly farmer because i was experiencing issues with that so i was kind of stuck in a loop of making a game run into an issue and then just make a new one speaking of jelly farmer you probably know on my channel i'm currently making a game called jelly world and it actually was highly inspired by this game called jelly farmer now in jelly farmer you played as a jelly and you would farm and go on in adventures and defeat enemies and then it turned into a game called jelly ventures this is the last build that i can find for jelly farmer before it turned into jelly ventures and essentially all you did was just walk forward and kill enemies and level up and that was the entire game. There was nothing more and nothing less. Speaking of Jelly Ventures, this is the last build that I have for the game. It starts off on the level select screen and you can walk around and look at the locations and the first place that you can go to is the Pelteon Castle. And in here it starts a cutscene with the king. He says, ho ho ho, welcome fairly. Today is your first day of training. You will meet Archie for your assignment in the Leafy Leaf Forest. Once you've completed it, please return to me. Good luck. And then it does a really cool cutscene of the jelly jumping up and landing on you and shooting you out of the cannon. After that, it takes you back to the level select. And then you can now go into the leafy leaf forest. Now that I'm in the forest, you can see a lot of differences between the last build and this build. I was actually turning this into a Pokemon style game where you have your attacks on the bottom of the screen. And now when you fought an enemy, it would enter a turn-based combat mode. And you could also have a partner along with you that would give you an extra attack. The last thing I was working on was the battle system, so it's pretty broken, but there's a cutscene with Archie here, so I'm just going to delete this enemy so I can get past it to get to Archie. And when I walk up to Archie, it gives me a cutscene where he talks about me being the new recruit. If you've actually watched my Luna Lane devlogs, you would know that Archie is a character in Luna Lane now, so Archie still lives on. 
He now lives in Luna Lane as a museum curator, but he started off as a little tiny jelly in Jelly Ventures. Once you're finished talking to him, he actually becomes your partner, and he would give you a move called Helping Hand, where sometimes it would deal damage to the enemy, but sometimes it would do absolutely nothing. And I thought it would be really funny if he talked a lot of game, but didn't really bring it in battle. Moving through the map, you can see that we have the first boss in the game, which was called the Mandraku, and he was like a forest spirit, and you might end up seeing him in Luna Lane, but looking a little bit different. Now we're going to look up the level select. I had three different areas that you could go to. The Leafy Leaf Forest, the Crystal Clove Cave, and then the Grass Tower. And then there was other places that I had planned that I obviously didn't get to yet. So now we're going to look at the Crystal Clove Cave. In here you can see a bunch of awesome crystals and stuff. I really like the way that this place looks. I might have to do something like this in Jelly World. And you can see the signature enemy for this area called the Lolo Light. And when I try to enter battle with it, it kind of just fuse with it and it breaks the game, which is really awesome. The next place that I'm going to show you is the start of the Partner Tower. So essentially each layer of the Partner Tower would be each of the levels. And when you would fight the enemies, sometimes they would want to become your friend, and then you would find them in the partner tower, and then you would come back to the partner tower to assign which partner you want to have in battle. I was really struggling to figure out how I wanted this to be laid out and how I wanted it to look, and that ultimately became the reason why I quit working on this game. This game also was going to feature farming as well, and I basically just stole the jelly farmer farming and then just slapped it into here. So you can see I have all these different crops, and I can select a crop and then place it. I don't exactly know how I planned on having them grow because originally you would have to do expeditions and then they would grow but here there's no way for them to grow so all you could do is just place a crop and then you were stuck in here you couldn't even press the leave button so I have no idea what I was doing with that. Alright we're on to the last game and this one was really experimental and really really weird. So I had this crazy idea where you had a game where basically all you did was place stuff down and then the rest of the game played itself. So you can see I have this jelly here and he is actually wandering and then I can place down different objects and he'll go over to those objects, inspect them and, and mess with them. I don't think I had any of it really working but you would place down things like for example these turnips and then sometimes he would walk over to them and then harvest them and then eat them. He had hunger and laziness and happiness and when he would get tired he would go back home and rest. And it's very, very strange, and I have no idea what my actual plans were for this game. I like that it was so weird and different, but none of it really worked, and it was all just quite a mess. Finally, he's doing something. Okay, you can see that he went to the rocks, and now on the top it says gravel. That means that he found some gravel, and I really don't know what that means. This game sucks. <laughs> This is going in the list of games that I'm never going to bring back and it was a bad idea. It was really interesting to go back and look at my older projects just to see how different I am now compared to then. And that was only like one or two years ago, which is really crazy to see that I've changed so much in such a little amount of time. Of course, I do have other projects. So if you wanna see more, please tell me down below and I'll make another video as a follow-up to this one. While you guys are watching this video, I'm actually back in my hometown celebrating the holidays with my parents and my family. And I hope you guys are having a really good holiday this year. But that's going to be it for today. As always, I'll see you in the next video.